Well, we're getting to the close of the night here. Um, just going to recap what was in today's video here today. Um, we started off with working on uh, um, truck 12. Um, we've put oil into the uh, waste oil burner. Let's see, these guys move straw today. I jumped back and forth to screwing around with various things. I had a blooper with the uh, C5. I ended up cutting some of the rubber mat out of the on the floorboard. I ended up cutting into the wires onto the fuel pedal, so I had to fix that. Um, we're putting a new exhaust on truck 12, so James went and got parts for that today. And um, Jason worked on uh, swing boom. I put the alternator back on the 7710. Um, uh, power extension cord on the block heater on the um, 544 payloader. Um, Nate wanted me to give him a hand with his uh, pickup. He's having trouble with the, wa uh, the water pump. He put a new one on it the other day, and uh, the gasket leaked on that, so I helped him with that, and uh, I think that's about going to do it for what we have going on. Enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks again for watching. Drop me a comment down below, and uh, we'll catch you at the end. This is our waste oil uh, heater here. It's actually right there, and then that's the oil storage tank uh, on the bottom portion. I'm using a diaphragm pump here to pump oil over from our oil storage tank. This is a thousand gallon uh, storage tank that we put our used motor oil in. We uh, just dump our pails into this hopper here and it ends up going in the two ports on the, on the top of the tank. And then we've got a uh, sight gauge that I put on there that tells how much used oil is in there. So after that cold spell here, uh, we, we went through a lot of oil. Now it's time to refill the uh, oil tank there. And that'll last a couple weeks. Uh, this furnace here ends up heating this part of the shop, which used to be the old shop. And where that overhead door is this way used to be the old shop. I did a lot of work in here uh, before it was even insulated. Then we added on that part out there, which that part is, uh, that has in-floor heat. So um, this furnace here um, ends up heating this part. And the heat ends up going over into that other part. We have the thermostat set lower in that other part of the building than in this side so that we can use more of the uh, heat from this waste oil furnace. This has worked really well. We burn about 1,500 gallons of used oil a year, however, and uh, that's what we use primarily to, to heat everything. This part of the building here is like 60 feet by 50, and that part is 60 feet deep by 50. So it ain't the, the biggest shop in the world, but uh, it works for what we're using it for right now, and it needs a cleaning real bad. So we'll see what else we can get ourselves into trouble to today. Uh, what I'm using is a diaphragm pump to transfer this oil over. It's right there. We got a straw going up into that other end of the tank there. And we're just pumping it over. It's uh, run by air. Pumping it over into that uh, storage tank here on the furnace. So we're going to get back on to doing a few other things here while that's filling the oil. Well, Jay's working on truck 12 here. The gasket came out of the swing boom housing he's just getting her put back in there now you see where that one ears broke off Jay Yeah, right in front. and uh, he's got to get that welded back on there that's what caused the gasket to pop out in the front and start leaking manure um, out the front of that housing uh, we ended up putting them ears on there to give that front um, oh 
a little more strength there, but that ear um, ended up breaking off. So he's going to get that welded back on here in a little while. Um, we got guys moving straw. I probably should run up and check on them, Jay, and then I'll be back. Are you set on this right yeah. now? Yeah. All right. All right, I'll be back. I'm going to finish that, running that oil over when I get back next door there. So, all right. Yeah, they're hauling straw with the little Volvo with a tag-along trailer they're able to get. 12, 16 bales on there. Um, getting 12 on the trailer and 4 on the truck, and they're hauling with a straight truck as well. Um, they've got a bit of a mess. Uh, where we have the bales stored, they've been in the barn for two years, and... Um, Oh, we've been around the barn a couple different times with rat poison, but the mice and rats and whatever have gotten into the, the bales, and there's a fair amount of uh, broken bales. So we've got that to deal with, and, and um, this is the second day we've moved any bales out of this barn. Uh, the first day was a bit of a disaster, uh, just getting the barn opened up. So we'll be up to, up, uh, to that barn here in a few minutes and we'll see how they're um, making out it's just starting to snow again we got well it was like 40 to 45 degrees this morning and it had rained all night and the temperature has dropped down um, into the 30s now it's just above yeah right around the freezing point and uh, now it's starting to snow again so for the most part, that snow that we got over the weekend, you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, most of it is gone. It's it's uh, right down to the grass um, and spots here. Uh, but we're starting to get it again. So, uh, I guess that's the nature of the beast. Um, so, we'll be up to that barn here in a couple minutes. Well, we are on location here. This barn we used to put little bales in. It uh, held 12,000 bales. It held 4,000 in, in uh, or 3,000. It held 3,000 in four different miles. And uh, it's got a, it's a real strong driving floor here, but this is the mess that they're dealing with. Um, it's all chaff over there. We're going to have to rebale it or something here but um yeah so but we used to set the elevator up into that end mile drive the tractor and wagons up in um filled each end mile and then we filled these center miles from the back side of the barn and uh we ended up piling this right up to the peak uh that was 10 years ago so, uh, the roads are getting kind of bad here now. I don't know how much more you're going to be able to haul. So, um, yeah. Yeah, this doesn't pay to uh, store a straw like this for any length of time because the freaking lights just get into it. So... Well, fun times here. I thought if we um, got to where the ground was froze and we didn't have any snow on the ground, we'd take this out in the field and uh, make windrows and, and bail it up again. But um, I don't know if they're going to finish this today or not. They've got three quarters of it done here anyway. And uh, it looks as though if the weather was to cooperate, they would be able to get this um, done, but it doesn't look uh, it doesn't look like the weather's going to cooperate. So, well, I'm going to get back to the shop. Looks like they've got this under control. And Alex here riding with boyfriend Alex. Can you say hello, Alex? Hi. Yeah. They were moving straw. They're going to shut down and. Uh, 
Jared's got a ride back with um, boyfriend Alex. We'll call him boyfriend Alex, right? So Alex was, my daughter was riding with uh, the other Alex, and um, they're going to shut them doors up. Now, uh, it seems to be that the mice like the blue twine better than the orangish red twine. I don't know what it is about the blue twine, but they seem to uh, like chewing on that stuff better. The neighbor that we buy straw from, he bails with the blue twine, and we buy the um, orange uh, twine. So, did you happen to notice that the twine, the blue twine, was eaten? The mice were eating the blue twine? Huh? Well, we better get back to the shop. Roads have absolutely went to crap. This is the main road here, but the back road was pretty well snow covered. And uh, they're just getting too slippery now, so. Uh, this is where we're putting them away in the hay barn. And then uh, we can grab them a little easier when they're in the hay barn. We can kind of grab them as we need them. So that's where they're going anyway, so we're only piling five high. We can't put six high in there, but there isn't any sense to uh, put them up in there that high. We're going to have them gone before we need uh, the rest of the barn, so. Alright, we've got a new uh, exhaust system. Yeah, James has got all the pieces and the parts here from uh, Kenworth. He just got back now, so we're going to run a new exhaust. Alex and Kerr are going to start working on this. We're going to start at the turbo, and we're going to go all the way back through. We've got a Band-Aid on it right here, and I don't know if we've got another one on back a little ways or not. Oh, there's another one. Or is that a clamp? That's a clamp right there. Uh, let's see. Where else we have a band-aid? Um, I guess we don't have any other band-aids on it, but it's right ready to choke itself out here. We did have to put um, a new elbow on here. The stock one would come up and this would all be one piece. We had to cut this off because this was rotted out. Corn silage time, we put a new uh, new elbow on there so we're going to jump this all out and put a uh, brand new muffler and uh, all the piping on it and everything now um, he's got some new flex pipe pieces here and on this flex pipe I've only seen it a couple other times um, there's arrows on it it tells you which way to run the um, exhaust and I don't know if you can see that or not there's an arrow right there um, that's a one there's another um, arrow Let's see if I can hold this right there Let's see if I can zoom in on that but um, this flex pipe is uh, directional now you guys see this here? You ever seen this with flex pipe before? You have to put it on there a certain way. This is no joke either. See? See the arrows? Your eyes are better than mine. Yeah. See? <laughs> goes on one way. See that? This, this flex pipe goes on one way. So the exhaust has to come across the ribs a certain way yeah, because, because the they're bolts. they're kind of raised. raised. Yeah. So um, you won't get the correct sound if that gets put on there wrong. So being that this is a six NZ, we want it to sound good. So we want to make sure that flex pipe gets put on there the right way. So what the heck did you get chrome for? I don't think you got all the pieces here. Let's see, yeah, I guess you got them all. But this is the um, the pipe that comes out from underneath the cab. Must be they think that we're gonna run.
on chrome. That's how that sits there. So corn silage time, this pipe um, rotted off in here. We just lopped it off back there, slammed an elbow on there, but we've got more band-aids and little pieces on here than uh, we care to admit to. So they're gonna start working on that now and uh, It'll be all brand new. We've got something going on with the block heater too. I don't know why that's unplugged. So what? What? Huh? What? They didn't what? give us what? They didn't give us a stack. What? That piece? Yeah. That's our custom job there, man. We make those. Yeah. Yeah, James didn't like that they didn't give him a stack. He wanted a chrome turnout, but <laughs> we end up making our own turnout, so. We'll get that designed right for you, James, and we'll get her welded up, all right? We'll have to, uh, we'll have to sandblast this, send it out, get chrome. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll do that for sure. All right, we are back on the C5. <clears throat> I had to cut, um, I'll get this format out of here. I had to cut um, some of this old rubber matting out um, you can see it right there it was kind of bubbled up and it was tore a little bit right in here and allowed a lot of dirt and crap to get down there so I'm cutting and trimming with my razor blade and uh, I ended up cutting oh the fuel pedal wire there so I've got to um, get this fuel pedal I got to get a, a loom holder unhooked from it on this right hand side so I can get more of the wire over here and get um, oh I gotta get some uh, I gotta get it connected and put some heat shrink or something on there because that is in a bad area right there you know down in where all the crap and, and stuff is so I'd rather have you know just a regular you know outside of needing the insulation here I'd rather have just a you know like a diamond plate floor uh, in here rather than um, this rubber crap it's all cinched up and it's all shrunk and and uh, you know from heating and expanding and cooling and all that crap it just needs to be all taken out and uh, gotten rid of so we're gonna I'll take the fasteners off of that and uh, get that wire back connected again I, I snipped that green one right out of the way and ended up getting into that blue one and I maybe cut that red one too I don't know if I cut the red one or not but awful close anyway so let me get this out of there and get her fixed alright so this is the dirty little culprit here um, I ended up getting two wires Cut them right in half, and then I got this blue wire here too. So we're gonna scale, uh, cut all these, and then we're gonna uh, reconnect them, and we'll slide a uh, loom holder. I think this loom holder ain't, or this sh uh, piece of shrink wrap. I don't know if it's gonna be big enough for uh, all six wires. There six or five there. Three, six, two, yeah, two, four, six. Yeah, six wires. I don't know if I can get six uh, butt connectors in there, but um, we might do three and three. So I'm going to cut these, um, and then I'm going to put um, butt connectors on there, and then I'll slide this shrink wrap on. And uh, the, the trouble is, is right about where I cut the damn thing is almost where... It's got to make the bend to plug into um, the fuel pedal. That's an electronic um, fuel pedal. So um, the only other thing I could do is uh, replace this wire harness. But we're going to try this first. So I've got this cut here now. And um, I'm going to pull a little bit of this loom off back here. Slide my shrink wrap on. And I'm going to do three and three. So two... Uh, two strands of uh, three wires with the shrink wrap and then uh, we'll get this all back together.
Alright, we're gonna let that cool before we there. Get that all the that's still pretty hot. We'll let that cool before we end up plugging that in. Having finished this up and get on to the next thing here. Alright, this one's done. Loom holder is all hooked back up. Wires are together. Pedal works the way it's supposed to. They got the rubber picked up, you know, like that there probably should be cut out and it's all freaking bubbled up back here too. Um it probably all should be cut out. The seats probably should be taken out. Remove the shifter. Probably should cut all this crap out of there and either put down a new piece or just do away with it all together. I mean this this stuff here is, um, you know, it's like that thick of insulation. That needs to stay there. But that top mat <coughs> needs to be taken off in there and uh, done away with. It's, uh, it's a freaking mess. So, ah, uh, all right, we've got our new alternator over here. So we're going to open that up and um, put the old one back in the box here. I don't know, this is a remake. But I don't know if uh, if it's gonna come with a pulley or not. So I've got the old pulley uh, off of the old one. So paperwork might as well stay right with it. Well, it does come with a pulley. So put that one out. I might as well set the pulley onto this one. Well, yeah. I might as well set it on there. And, uh, they choose to use it on the next go around, it's on there. So that's on there. We're going to box this back into here like that. Paper's right back in there. Now that one's ready to go back. Now we'll put this uh, new one on. All right, so I'm gonna get the battery tester and uh, we're gonna start this up and make sure it's charging. All right, we're just gonna test this to see what it's uh, putting out the bolt. I was asking the other day what I was using to test the, the volts on that alternator. This is just a battery load tester. I use it to, to check to see if an alternator is charging or not because it hooks up easy and, and um, you know a multimeter you got to have three hands just about to, to uh, use it. Um, but mainly this is meant to use to uh, check the load on a battery, whether it's a six volt battery or a 12 volt battery. You just hook up the leads to the battery and uh, hook up the leads from the uh, battery tester here to the battery. And then you just press this button and you, and you load it. And when you're, essentially what you're doing when you're loading the uh, battery, you're actually putting the, just about the amount of load on the battery that a starter would put on it. Um, just because a battery is reading, you know, 12.4 volts or whatever, doesn't mean it has enough amps in it um, to crank over that starter. So if you end up falling down below when you're loading down in below, um, you know, 11, between 9.5 and, and 11, you're more than likely going to have to replace that battery or it's just not charged up enough so that's what I use this for you can get these for 25 bucks um, so we're gonna move on to uh, the next thing we're just about done here tonight I got one more 
project that I want to work on, and uh, and that's going to be it for tonight. Well, we're working on the 544 payloader. This is the payloader that I put a block heater in the other night. Um, now, uh, I'm going to put an extension cord on this so that we can plug it in right here at the fuel tank. Uh, I did this same thing to the other payloader, but I couldn't get the cord through the back, so I ended up running it up front. And uh, we run out through um, and ended up putting it up there by the step. So, um, but this one's going to be right back here by the fuel fill. Now, without that cord on there, you'd have to open up your compartment. This, this panel folds up and locks like that, and then you got your door that shuts, but you have to open up your door, flop your panel down, plug the cord in, and more than likely leave your bottom panel down. So we're going to get a cord on there and uh, get away from that problem. Now, what I'm going to use is this old lead cord that's been... Oh, it's been, it's seen a couple of injuries in its lifetime, but I think I've got just enough of the good part of this cord uh, to put on there. Their insurance company don't like us putting um, electrical tape on cords anyway, so we're going to uh, cut this cord and uh, we're going to pull the other end through um, with this string here. Okay, we've got our cord end ready to go on. We're just going to put the bottom side of the cord end on first. I've done this before and forgotten to put this on. It's no fun. So, if you don't know which goes where, or you're not color coded or anything, the white wire always goes on the wider uh, prong. If you have two flat prongs, the white goes on the, the, the wider one, the black goes on the narrow one, and the green goes on the center one, which is the ground. So we've already got these all stripped back. <coughs> First candidate is going to be the green one. Let's send that guy in through there. So we got him lined up good. Don't push him against me. Tighten that up. Good and tight. Now, we got the white one is going to want to go into the next one. Come on, open up. Spread them apart there. Right, so we got that in there. that. Now we got this black guy to get in there. He's always going to be the hardest one to get in because he ain't going to want to work. Alright. So, get that one in there. Alright, he went right in. Alright, now we can pull our base together here. Just gotta figure out which way that wants to go. Right, 
Let's go right there like that. There. That's all plugged in. Just get a zip tie. Put that guy on there like that. Now we left that up there enough so you can hold on this end. Put that on there. It's not going to be hit by the door because of the way the door closes. It's going to be up in here. So it's not going to affect it at all. So this is going to do it for this one. So we're at the computer now. Uh, some of you were asking the other night, um, or the other day rather, um, what I use for um, the, this equipment program. This this is what it's called here. It's it's Tatum's Truck and Trailer Equipment Management System. Now. Um, this has been about the only program that I could find out there to do what I wanted it to do, um, which is keep track of our equipment. So we're going to go into here. Uh, we put our alternator in a 7710. So I put that in the search field. Search. There's a 7710 tra tractor. Now this is the equipment summary page. Serial number, year, model. Um, make uh, what kind of engine it has in it you know whether it be a diesel gas whatever now we're going to go over to the repairs um, completed um, part of this um, program here so repairs completed I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm just going to put in um, swapped alternator Two seventy-eight ten installed new one. Now I'll put in remanufactured. Okay, now I just identified um, add a D there what I um, did to that. Now, uh, you got an odometer reading here, which the tractor doesn't have any odometer, you know, doesn't have an odometer on it. So here's the hours reading here. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Um, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you at the next one. Thanks again for watching. And Nate's put a new water pump on this, and it's freaking leaked on them. I think they give them the wrong gasket or something or there's something wrong with this water pump. So he's about as frustrated, well, only half as frustrated as I would be. Um, I'd be throwing stuff right now Nate. So I gotta hand it to you. You're, uh, you're doing a good job. Um, he's got a new radiator in here. It, this is just about race ready you know that? It's close. Yeah. So. He even brought uh, beer tonight. Um, I told him I'd help him with this. And uh, we'll see if we can't figure out why it's uh, leaking. We got some tricks up our sleeve on how we're going to get that to seal up. Um, if it has a warped water pump, we're going to throw it up against the wall and uh, going to make these guys give them a new one, right, Nate? So. Yeah, he even brought beer tonight. Look at that, he brought my kind, too. You usually drink the old Milwaukee stuff, don't you? usually drink Bush. Bush, there you go. He likes Bush. Uh, beer. Yeah. Bush beer. <laughs> so, he'll get that off in there, and we'll see what we can get figured out here. Alright, so this water pump is back to leaking, just like it was. Nate put this together. And it's leaking from this bolt here. Now we've got, we're full of coolant. Now, all these bolts are hand tight. We're going to start tightening them up slowly. We're thinking the water pump is warped. It's a remanufactured water pump. Napa. 
and when we loosen this water pump up it went to dripping less so we're actually going to go back on this tomorrow get uh, Napa to replace this water pump and slap another one on there. The bolt I'm tightening up right now is the position that it was leaking from last night and continue to leak from tonight. We're just going around, retorquing these, tightening them up as we loosen them all back off. 